Welcome. In this video, we'll show you how to get started using Figma. Here's what we'll cover. To learn more about any of these topics, be sure to watch our other videos that cover them in more detail. Let's get started. Figma is absolutely free to use. To sign up for your free account, visit figma.com and click sign up. You can create your account using your email address or by using an existing Google account. Just provide a few more details to complete the sign-up process and we'll be ready to go. After you click Create Account, you will be taken to the file browser of your newly created Figma account. We'll also send you an email to verify your email address, which is required for some functions, so don't forget about it. The file browser is like your home page. On the right side is where we display your files. We've provided you with some starter files to get started. Near the top right corner, you can change the sort order of your files. We can also perform many actions for files from the menu, like sharing, renaming, duplicating, and deleting. Let's delete this file for now. On the bottom right corner, you'll see a small black question mark. This is for help and feedback. Click the question mark to quickly access a number of help resources while you're working. You can visit our help center, video tutorials, user forum, and more. We don't offer live chat support, but if you're still having issues, you can select contact us to reach our support team. We try to reply as quickly as we can. On the left panel is where we navigate between different areas of the file browser. Right now, we are in the Recent section, which contains our most recently viewed files. This is the Draft section. Any new file you create will be placed here, unless you're creating a new file inside of an existing project. Last, we have our Deleted section. We can see the file we deleted earlier. If we accidentally delete a file, we can click the menu icon on the thumbnail and restore. We can also delete forever if needed. Use Figma's search bar at the top of the panel to locate your files by name. There's also a button to create a new team, but we'll cover that later. From the file browser, click the import file icon in the toolbar to quickly browse and select a sketch file or figma.fig file to import. You can also drag and drop files from your desktop right into the file browser. I already have a sketch file here, so let's do that. Did you happen to notice that we haven't downloaded any applications or installers yet? That's because we've been using Figma's web application. Figma is always online, runs in your browser, and automatically saves all of your changes to the cloud as you work. If you don't like working in your web browser, we've got you covered. Select the file menu in the top left corner, then Get Desktop App, and you can download our desktop application for Windows or Mac OS. The desktop app still syncs to the cloud, so you'll always have access to our web-based collaborative features. Now that we've covered the file browser, let's talk more specifically about Teams and file organization. In Figma, your files live in projects, and projects live in Teams. We'll start by clicking New Team and giving our team a name. We can choose either a free starter team or a paid professional team. Let's select a free starter team since we can always upgrade later. Within our team space, we have the ability to create a new project, invite people to become a team member, enable Slack OAuth to allow people to join our team through Slack, upgrade our team, and view the admin dashboard. Let's start by inviting a few colleagues to our team. We can do this by clicking Invite a Team Member. I'll invite my coworker Joey by typing in his email address. We have the option to change the default permission level for our team members. Let's change this to Can Edit so he can create and edit files in the team. Let's switch over to Joey's Figma account. Since Joey doesn't yet belong to the Superstar team, the team does not appear in his sidebar. In the top right corner of the toolbar, we can see Joey has an unread notification. If he clicks the bell icon, there's an invitation waiting to be accepted. He'll do that now. Now, Team Superstar appears in the sidebar. Since Joey also has edit permissions, he can create projects and invite team members just like we did. Let's return to our own view to continue. A free starter team allows you to have up to two editors and three projects. When your team grows, you'll want to consider the benefits of a professional team. Let's pretend our company just hired our third designer, Sarah, and we'd like to start collaborating with her on our travel app. We'll click Upgrade Superstar in our team space and upgrade to a professional team. 
Since we know our team will not grow beyond three editors, we'll choose the annual option to save 20% off the monthly rate. It's important to remember that any additional editors added to the team will be charged at the monthly rate of $15 per month per editor. Let's click on the option to add additional seats and change this to three, one for each of our editors. After entering our credit card information, we'll accept the terms and upgrade our team. With our colleagues invited, we'll create a new project for a travel app that our team will be working on. You can see there is a small drop-down menu available when creating our project. This is for controlling the default project permissions. By default, projects are set so everyone on the team can edit. Other options like Can View and Invite Only are available for professional teams. For easy access, our new project appears both in our team space and in the sidebar on the left. We can remove projects from our sidebar by unstarring them. Let's click into our travel app project by clicking on it in the sidebar. Looking at the center of the toolbar, we can see the folder organization is a project named travel app which belongs to our superstar team. We've created our team, superstar, and a project, travel app. Now it's time to create our first file. We can create a new file by clicking the plus icon in the top left corner of the toolbar or by clicking new file in the file browser. Now we're in the Figma editor and this is where the real magic happens. In the upper left corner is the file menu. Expand this to find the search feature. Search is a great way to find all kinds of functions and preferences. You can return to the file browser from this menu as well. To the right of the menu we have the move tool. Some icons in the toolbar have a small drop-down arrow next to them, indicating other tools within the menu. If we click on the arrow to expand, we see the Scale tool is also available here. Next are the Frame and Slice tools. Generally speaking, frames in Figma are similar to artboards in other programs. Moving to the right, we have all of our vector shape tools to create new vector objects including the rectangle, ellipse, and line tools. Next, we have the pen and pencil tools. After that, the text tool. And finally, the comment tool to leave comments for your teammates. In the center of the toolbar, we have the file name. By default, our file is named Untitled. This file lives in our project, Travel App. While we're here, let's click on the name to rename our file. Next to the file name, there is another drop-down menu with additional actions, such as viewing the version history of the file. Figma automatically saves versions of your files for you, or you can manually save a version whenever you'd like. We can also delete, duplicate, and move our file from this menu. On the right side of our toolbar, we see our avatar. If other team members are working in this file, you will see their avatars as well. Next is the share button. Clicking this opens a new window where we can see the existing permissions granted to this file. Currently, everyone on our superstar team can access this file because we didn't change our advanced project permissions earlier. We can also enable public access so that anyone with our link can view the file. We can invite new editors and viewers to the file, just as we did when we invited people to our team. Let's invite Joey to the file so that he will receive a notification. Joey now appears in the list. This gives us an accurate view of who our file is shared with at all times. We can also change anyone's permission on the file from here. Next to the share button, we have the play icon, which opens presentation view. Presentation view is where you can present your static designs or interactive prototypes. We haven't created anything yet, so let's keep moving for now. Next, we have the eye icon, which contains various view settings and preferences that allow us to control how Figma displays different things like the pixel grid or multiplayer cursors. To the right, we have the zoom menu, which displays the current zoom level. Finally, we have a menu to export any assets that have an export setting applied to them. Let's look at the large gray space in the center of our screen. This is called the canvas, and it's where we'll do the bulk of our design work. We can adjust the color of our canvas from the properties panel on the right side. We'll cover the properties panel in more depth soon. Let's move on to the layers panel on the left side. At the top of the layers panel, we see that we are on page one of our document. Pages in Figma help us keep our files organized. 
We can easily add additional pages by clicking New Page or by right-clicking, which gives us access to additional options, such as keeping the Pages panel open. Let's create our first frame by using the Frame tool and selecting the iPhone 8 option from the presets on the right side. This creates a frame on the canvas, which also appears in the Layers panel. If we add elements to our design within the frame, they automatically become children of the frame in the Layers panel. We can move elements inside and outside of our frame to see how parenting and unparenting works. Notice the changes reflected in the Layers panel. Now that we've created a shape, let's check the Properties panel on the right side. The Properties panel is where you adjust the properties and attributes of your elements, including alignment and distribution, location or coordinates on the canvas, dimensions, rotation, corner radius, constraints, blend modes, fill, stroke, effects, and export settings. The available properties will change based upon the element that you have selected on the canvas. If we don't select anything, the properties for the canvas will be shown. At the top of the properties panel, we have a series of tabs. We've been working in the design tab, but we also have the prototype tab where we can assemble interactive prototypes and the Code tab where we can view CSS, iOS, and Android code. You may have noticed we skipped over the tabs at the bottom of the Layers panel, but we also have tabs for Components and the Team Library. The Active tab is the Layers tab. We don't have any components to use these yet, so let's make some. Components are UI elements that can be reused across your design files. They help make your designs more consistent and allow for changes to be made quickly. Here, we've made a simple button comprised of a rounded rectangle and a text layer. We can select both layers and create a component by right-clicking and selecting Create Component or by clicking the Create Component icon in the toolbar. This creates a master component. If we duplicate this master component, we'll create a component instance. If we change a property of the master, such as background color, the instance will automatically inherit this change. Sometimes, however, you may need an instance to behave differently. Making changes to instances are called overrides. Overrides allow designers to create variations on the original component. If changes are made to the master component, the overrides on our instance will remain unchanged. Now that we've created our first component, let's return to the Components tab. By default, components are available only in the file in which they are created. However, you can also publish your components to your team library so that your entire team can use those same components across files, or even build out a complete design system. Let's take a look at what a fully built design system might look like. With our design system built, we can use it to start designing quickly. We're designing for the iPhone 8, so we'll start by pulling in a copy of our iPhone status bar component. Next, let's add our navigation tab bar component to the bottom of the frame. I already know what I want to have on this screen, but Joey has some ideas on the layout, so let's ask him to join us. We know Joey has joined because we see his avatar in the top right corner. By clicking on Joey's avatar, we can enter observation mode and watch him design in real time. Let's watch while Joey finishes building this screen. We can see that he is adding a date, title, and profile component to the page. Because we created our design system of components, Joey can use them just as easily as we can from the Components tab. I think I'm starting to get the idea, so let's exit observation mode and start editing the copy while Joey keeps building. I see that Joey added two destination cards to our design while we were editing. Let's edit one of those to make it unique. Since these cards are components, we can use overrides to customize them without losing their connection to the master component. We've now built the first screen of our app. 
But what if we spent all of this time building our app and decided we wanted to see how it would look on something other than the iPhone 8? That's easy, because we've created our components with constraints. Constraints determine how parts of our design behave as the frame is resized. If we change the size of our frame, we can see how the different elements would move if our screen was wider or longer. This is essential when building responsive designs that work on screens of all shapes and sizes. Now that we've got our first screen, let's skip ahead to when we have our design nearly complete. Here we've completed a single user flow of our travel app design. Now, let's create a simple prototype. We can link parts of our design to new frames or screens, and even add transitions. Once we have completed our prototype, we can view it in presentation view by clicking the play icon. And here we can view our finished prototype that is ready to be demoed to our team. I want to make sure I save a version of this file to mark this milestone. From the editor, I can access the version history from the drop-down in the toolbar. Then I can click the plus icon to create a new version. I can also give it a title and a description. We have a named version history entry in the list. If at any point in the future we want to restore back to this version, we can. I think this version of the app is ready to be handed off to our development team. To do this, we'll share our file and give our developer can view permission. They will be able to view our file, export assets, and view the code tab which contains Android, iOS, and CSS code. And there you have it. We've covered Figma from end to end. We set up our team, created a collaborative design, built a prototype, and shared it with our developer. Want to learn more? Check out our other videos and be sure to join our user forum to connect with the Figma community.